14. Um, I call this meeting to order and ask the clerk to please call the roll. Trustee Aarons? Here. Camerer? Absent. Carbonero? Absent. Martin? Here. Ranky? Present. Shipman? Here. President Wallace? Present. The only item under the agenda this evening is under the Public Works Committee, and that committee is chaired by Trustee Aarons. Oh, how fortunate. Well, um, our one and only agenda item is the Canadian National Sound Mitigation Plan on Spalding Road. And as you may or may not know, uh, we received a gift. Do we call it a gift? So, no. A grant. <laughs> Settlement. Settlement. It is Settlement. a Funded contribution for impact. Money. <laughs> we, were, we got money, a um, million dollars, uh, to do some noise mitigation. Um, we looked at our first choice, and it was cost prohibitive. Now we're looking at our second choice. So you guys want to take all? Can you take it away? Do the little steer loader? Let the record reflect that Trustee Carbonero and Trustee Cameron joined the meeting. What we did is we looked at, um, with, that, with that million dollars that we had received with the purchase of the CN buying the uh, EJ&E lines, they had, um, we had a thousand dollars, I'm sorry, a million dollars to work with for a sound mitigation plan within 2,500 feet of the CN line. What we started looking at and what we what our focus was on is the crossing the Spalding Road railroad crossing where the Metro line crosses the Spalding it would be the eastern section the CN line actually runs a little bit further to the west is part of a quiet zone that we worked with along with West Bartlett Road all the way up through Barrington that was through the Northwest Municipal Conference we dealt with that quite a few years ago so what we were focusing on is the metro crossing on Spalding Road it is within the boundaries of the agreement saying that 2500 feet from the CN line so we started looking at that. We had meetings with, uh, there, there is a different committee that you have to have, the ICC, the Metra Railroad, um, to go out there to look to see if it would meet the minimum qualifications for a quiet zone. We started having meetings, and as we approached that, or as we were having the meetings, not let alone does Metra have two rails there, the CPR spur line goes through that same intersection and also a CN has a spur line in a close proximity. So not just going to have to put gates across the, sing the Metro 2 lines, they said we had to increase it, the width of the quiet zone to uh, encompass <coughs> the spur line, the one spur track. The angle of the Railroad and Spalding Road is also a big concern and a big problem because of the skew on that. It's not a direct cross. Uh, the road is actually at a diagonal across the railroad tracks. The other concern that we had there is there are two driveways in a very close proximity to that intersection. One being global towing to the east of the tracks uh, between Lambert Lane and the railroad crossing, it's the metric crossing itself. And also on the west side, there is the um, snow, Tovar snow removal has a driveway in that proximity within, both of them are within 50 feet of that. To put a quiet zone, there's, there's different, uh, different criteria on the quiet zone there's the raised median we looked at the raised median that has to be a hundred foot in each direction that would not work in this location we would be blocking two driveways one to the east one to the west so we wouldn't be able to do that that was one of the items that was throwing thrown out we looked at um, way wayward signs or wayward horns local horns right addressed right at the intersection right where the cars would stop there that would constantly sound while the train is continually going through that 
So you have a lower decibel horn than the railroad track, than the rail, than the engines themselves, but you have this constant horn for a longer duration, which really didn't seem like it was suitable for any type of a quiet zone. You know, why a quiet zone and you're blowing a horn for a longer duration? Didn't make much sense. One of them that we looked at, and the only feasible way would work, would be a four quadrant gate. The four quadrant gate is there's gates, there's four gates crossing or closing off the oncoming and the outbound. The problem is moving these gates out so far because of the angle of the road and to encompass that third rail, you would have enough room that you could put a semi and a half between the gates. That's not going to work. The only, the only way that they said that that would work is you would have to put raised medians along with a shorter raised median with the four quadrant gates. So we started discussions with Metro Railroad tracks. They have no experience with four quadrant gates. They have one location in the state of Illinois that Metro is working on a trial period. That's about all they have. They had no data. If it's working, nothing on that. Um, what we would also have to do is there would have to be an agreement between the CPR spur rail and METRA because you would have to have one controller to cover both railroads. To get two railroad companies to work together to turn around under one controller, who has jurisdiction on the maintenance, who has jurisdiction I don't have another 40 years to try and get that through. I mean, I, I think, and that's what they virtually said. The bottom line, Metro says they would be willing to work with us, but your million dollars would get us maybe a third, maybe a halfway there. So right there, you know, two and a half, three million, and then they said that might, you might need even more with that. So with that being said, we sort of looked at that project and said, you know, we only have a certain dollar amount to work with to come up with the other money and all the time that we've had the effort to go through that, I don't know if it would even be feasible with some of the numbers that they gave us. So what we've done is we looked at other criteria, what we could benefit the residents in that neighborhood by creating some other type of a sound mitigation plan. So we went back and looked at up and down the metro, or I'm sorry, the, the, the CN line, and just east of the CN line between South Bartlett Road and Spalding is the trailer park. Those homes are within, they butt right up against the state, the, the property of the metro tracks. Their back door or backyard is right at the back <laughs> back fence line of the metro rail. I'm sorry, the CN rail. That is where they have um, a staging area. Um, they park a lot of their a lot of their trains there. That's where they do a lot of switching right in that area. The engines are constantly just idling, rumbling. There's a lot of rumbling noise in there. So we started looking at that, and you know it's right in the back backyard of those. So what we have done is we've we've met with Dr. Thunder. He is a sound expert. We've dealt with him in 2009 on the same area, and his name is Dr. Thunder, and he's a sound <laughs> specialist. Um, partner we, Lightning. I'm sorry. Is a partner named Lightning. Mm -hmm. We've met with him. Um, he is saying that we should go through a sound study, measure what the decibels, measure what the sounds are right there for that railroad, what those are, what type of an impact they are into the trailer parks, and move forward with that. With possibly, depending on you know what we can accomplish, we'll do some monitoring right now, monitoring of the existing sounds and what he would come up with a plan if we'd put some sound walls along the, the mobile home park, um, what kind of benefit that would have into the, into 
those neighborhoods and the residents right in there. They are the closest residential community that we have adjacent to the CN tracks. And 86 trains on a daily basis go through right right past those homes. Those are all Metra? No, no those are all CN, yeah. CN rails. So they're all freight trains? All freight trains. 86 a day? 86 a day go through that area, right. So what we're looking at is the proposal or, or the estimate with, uh, for Dr. Thunder to do his evaluation, his do his study is, is somewhere under $10,000 to turn around and evaluate that. And it's really an update of the one he did? 2009. In 2009. And, and does that money come out of a million dollars? or is this Yes, it does. Okay. What happened, I mean, what could have changed since 2009? Is, the, is there more traffic? Different area. Oh, it's a different location on the tracks? For the no, he no. did, in 2009, he just did a walkthrough and gave us an evaluation. He did not do any sound studies at to that time. To see the actual results right. of That's what might. That's correct. Okay. This time he would actually come out and put sound instruments along those areas, <laughs> along those residential streets. How many residents are we uh, talking about potentially? Um, benefiting from come on there's how many homes? within a mile of that air, of that location if you put up the sound barriers how, how long how far does that go does that go a quarter of a mile just the area we it, that's that's what the sound study would evaluate where where we can get the biggest impact on that and how far we could stretch out the that million dollars how much sound well I don't have that idea very or I don't have any idea on that it's all based on what levels you want to bring that sound down to will will determine how high the elevation of that uh, of the wall it would be obviously a shorter wall would be a lot less you know you then a taller wall. The other thing that he's got to look at, uh, and, and we went through this when the state of Illinois was putting up sound walls, is that noise will bounce off and hit someone a block away much more intensely than it would have the person who lives there. So we have to look at the kind of sound wall, the height of the sound wall, its location to make sure that we aren't positively benefiting the people who live right along the wall and the folks who are in that end of the mobile home facility have more noise. So there's a whole lot of items uh, that we have to look at to see if that's an appropriate way to spend a million dollars. What was the original? I know it was from CN when they, wasn't it when they bought the railway? Yes. And, and what, what was the original um, thought? Was it always a quiet zone? I remember Scott had spent a lot of time. Uh, he went through how much time he, or Steve, I'm sorry. He had right. spent a lot of time investigating the probability of us getting it. And it was, it was nearly impossible, like you just described, Paul. It's nearly impossible because of the, because of the way that that intersection is designed. CN did not indicate a sound wall. They said, this is a million dollars, and you can spend it as you see appropriate <coughs> with some, you know, parameters around it to, uh, to mitigate the fact that we're here now and we're going to have more trains. And frankly, it was to get us out of the lawsuit that we're part of track, all these towns who were suing CN, and so they, you know, the lawsuit was, was dwindling, and they said, you know, take this million, get out of the lawsuit, and spend it on your residence. Any other questions? <laughs> Have we ever went back to the well and said, hey, this isn't really going to do it for us? No. That's not that's really feasible. Yeah. No, but we did get an extension on the time. Yeah, I know that. Okay. Should we move this on to the board then? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that concludes the report. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, one and all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Trustee Ahrens. Um, there's nothing else to the good order to entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. second. I have no idea. Uh, it's moved by Trustee uh, Kammerer, seconded by Trustee Carbonero. Will the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Ahrens? Yes. Kammerer? Yes. Carbonero? Yes. Martin? Yes. Sankey? Yes. Shipman? Yes. We are adjourned.